and welcome to a special edition of Sunday Night. Tonight, a worldwide investigation into the evil and destructive ways of a self-proclaimed messiah, a charismatic Australian whose devoted disciples believe he walked this earth 2,000 years ago. We commissioned the Reverend David Milliken, one of the world's foremost experts on cults, to head up our special investigation that's been 10 months in the making. Tonight, we'll take you inside the messiah's isolated Queensland compound where he's preparing his followers, including children, for the apocalyptic end of the world. The idea that the group is, is, is coming together in a community and that Miller is developing a compound, in my opinion, is ominous because only the most extreme cults isolate themselves in a compound. Jonestown or a Waco Davidian group, which were two groups that ended tragically in mass suicide. This is when groups become the most extreme because the leader controls everything. The leader is this man. Alan John Miller, but but I'm, I'm actually Jesus. I remember all of the events of my crucifixion. I understood what was going on. I understood the reason for my death. And he's collecting disciples. Miller has convinced them that they were with him at his crucifixion. I went to get the spike and smash it into his hands. And just so much love had come from him. So I couldn't do it. It was excruciating to watch basically the annihilation of the person that I love the most. <laughs> Whenever I think about him now, I just cry. I'm starting to have a, a soul, like an emotional realisation of who he is. I'm on the way to Mergen in country Queensland to two days of teachings by Yeshua ben Joseph, or Jesus. It's a gathering of the faithful from around the world. Well, welcome along. I'm Jesus, this is Mary. And so what we want to do today is talk about addictions and bribery and fear, threats and blackmail. I can feel that many of you are still in addictions with regard to your development towards God. I've got all of these emotional injuries. I will feed them with my truth. These things are not going to go away from you just by you getting baptised. To me, these words sound like rehashed New Age pop psychology. But for these people, they burn with the light of divine truth. Let yourself feel the disillusionment you feel, the disillusionment about the search. What's happening here is AJ is talking about emotions. Now, most religions are suspicious of emotions. They see faith as essentially a thing of the mind. But emotions take us to the heart of AJ's teachings. What he's doing is setting up a sort of spiral where people get dragged down and down and down. And people are asked to plumb the depths of emotions from which many of them can never escape. One of his techniques to draw people in is to demand that they find emotional trauma in their family history. Let yourself feel what it was like to have to shut yourself down so much just to please your mother. Because that's, that's what she wants. That's what she wants you to do. Shut you down so much. And she was giving you all of these things, but she wants a heap of things in return from you. And that feels bad to you. So allow yourself to connect with that. That's it. And as you connect to that, you will start really connecting. That's it. And as you connect, <laughs> that's how much rage is there. You see, this is the childhood rage now. You see that? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And this is the childhood rage that's still there. Let yourself feel it. Yeah. You feel that? Right. A lot of times they and children are being caught in Miller's web as well. 
Before he became Jesus, Miller was a Jehovah's Witness pastor, but fell out with the church over an incident with a prostitute. I first met him and Mary during the Brisbane floods. For many years, Miller made his money out of land development and a computer business. But now he believes he holds the salvation of the world in his hands. Along with a growing number of disciples who are buying properties next to him, he lives outside Kingaroy in Queensland. My first memories were having nails driven through my feet. And they, those memories began when I was just over two years of age. So I didn't put them together as, oh, I'm Jesus from that. And so I just sort of slotted it into the back of my head and went merrily on with my life until such a time as I started having a lot more specific memories about my life, uh, which happened when I was 33, really. Is it true that your mother tried to commit you to a psychiatric ward? Yes, it is true. Yeah. yeah. And so, and, and these are things that I knew would occur. This is why I went, what? I've got to, like, I'm having all these memories of who I am and I realise all of these different things coming up and I also think about my future and I go, boy, do I really want to bite this off again? My mum and dad in the first century followed me around telling everybody I was crazy for most of my ministry. So, so, you know, my father didn't even change his mind until my passing in the first century. So can you show me the, the nail marks in your hands? Of course oh. not, because it's not the same body. Miller spreads the word via the web, YouTube, and seminars here yeah, and around the world. Sad. He claims there are 100,000 of his DVDs in circulation. He calls his message the divine love path, which offers oneness with God through AJ's teachings. How long have you been doing the path? Like, uh, I'm just looking at everyone. Hold it right up. Um, praying for God's love and courage and strength because I'm feeling a lot of fear. Two and a bit months. Two and a bit months. Mm. It's torn my life to pieces. Mm. I've lost my wife. I've lost my home. I've lost my family. It, it's been tremendously devastating. And yet he's calling this divine love. If Miller walked into the room right now, the way I feel right at this point, initially I'd have him up against the wall and I look at him right in his eye. And <laughs> I ripped a f***er's throat right out. Miller's reach is international. In San Francisco, I met Dugan McVerk, whose wife, Jennifer, fell under Miller's spell. Tell me about Jen before she knew AJ. Yeah, Jennifer is one of the most effervescent and lively spirits put into a body that I'd ever seen with some you know, the most amazing connections that I've ever had with another human being. So in that relationship, what happened for yourself is it just triggered more of that childhood hurt that you felt with men. Uh, Jennifer was introduced to Miller's teaching by two Australian friends and became captivated. She would watch and listen 
up to five hours a day. Every day, there would be more downloads, and it was continuous. I watched Jen over the course of a month or so basically become so absorbed in it that it seemed to be the whole focus for her. It was everything that she would be listening to. She came to me with tears and said to me, Dugan, he really is Jesus. AJ really is Jesus. Unbeknown to her husband, she began donating money to Miller and communicating by phone and email. Miller raised doubts about whether her husband was her soulmate. Apparently, there's some requirement for soulmates, according to A.J. Miller, which brought into our relationship the innuendo of doubt as to whether or not she and I were soulmates. It was as if there was a, 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 a third party sitting right between us all the time. And it, I was watching Jennifer basically just disappear. Within five months, Jennifer left Dugan and planned to come to Australia to be with Miller. Desperate Dugan contacted Rick Ross, America's leading cult programmer, to stage an intervention. When Dugan first contacted me, he was very worried, and he was hoping that somehow, through an intervention, they might reconcile. Jennifer, A.J. Miller is not Jesus. I explained to Jennifer that after meeting many, many cult leaders that claimed to be Jesus or God, how could she be sure that Miller was in fact Jesus? And all she could respond is, the teachings make me feel good. It's given me joy. And there was a kind of euphoria that she experienced from listening to the tapes. And in, in a sense, this is a key to the way that Miller uh, quells their critical thinking, induces the kind of uh, self-hypnosis that I've seen. They put their headphones on and they listen to downloads for hours on end. And I think this has a mind-numbing effect on them. I am out of here. The intervention failed. Basically, Miller sets himself up as God. He is Jesus Christ. He is the God-man. And if you disagree with him, you disagree with God. So if you have a, a spouse or a family member and they are critical of Miller, they have come against God. And therefore, they are not spiritually right for you. Or as Miller might say, they are not your soulmate. Yesterday morning, I left my husband after 30 years. And... Um, Yesterday morning? Yes. And... I knew that it was something I needed to do because right. I was in an unloving situation and I knew that I no longer really loved him and so I wasn't living in truth. Yeah. But it was still very hard and it was still very sad. Yeah. I've talked to so many people around you yep. who are married, some of them married for many years, yep. and I asked them the question, how long have you been married? Some people say 25 years. I say, is your wife your soulmate? And they say, I don't know. They say, I don't know. And that's OK? Like... It's not OK, AJ. Why? It puts a tremendous pressure. Marriages are breaking up around you because of this teaching about soulmates. It will become very obvious to you whether the person you're currently with is your soulmate or not. And this is why it's so good to be in your current relationship and work through the issues until you get to the point where you know that this isn't right. And when you know it isn't right, obviously that is the time for you to leave. My teachings are all about love, developing relationship. No, they're not, AJ. They are. They're not. Your, a lot of your teachings are about addictions, about emotions, about fear, about struggle. No, you take people into a sort of holocaust, an emotional holocaust. Yeah, I can't agree with that, David. I'm sorry. Well, that's what I see. When you start opening this soulmate side of you, what will happen is every other attraction that you've ever had will start to die. You think you'll ever stop missing it? No. No. I mean, I didn't find the person I wanted to marry 
until I was 56 years old. In my heart, you know, I'll never, never get over missing her. I, I'm really, 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 really amazed by just the, the stunning arrogance that this man has to claim what he's claiming. I mean, he's about as, uh, how does one say, I don't think he would know Jesus if Jesus came and bit him in the arse. Tell me about that. what you think about AJ. Who, who is AJ to you? He's a, a bringer of truth. I feel that he is the Messiah. He's the messenger of God's truth um, to help us wake up. Yes, he is. He is Jesus. And, and you've just discovered that. Yourself. I've only discovered that, yes. And, uh, since I've been on this path through AJ's teachings, um, that's how we come to God. AJ, do you do you always tell the truth? Um, I at, I always attempt to, as far as I know it at that time. Yes. So, did you walk on water? No. Did you um, raise Lazarus from the dead? Yes. So are you saying that you did some sort of miracles, mm -hmm. but not other s sorts? Um, there's a few miracles in the Bible I didn't do, but the rest... Of, the rest you did? The rest I did. Like, but most of the miracles involving recovery of people's sight, the recovery yes. of their limbs. But the walking on water is one of the ones I didn't do. Yes. Um, the, another one that I didn't do was turning the uh, water into wine. You didn't? So you couldn't, uh, you couldn't give us a, a, a nice little shot. You want a job now, do you? <laughs> no. 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 AJ Miller shares his home in central Queensland with a woman 13 years his junior. The way that I first met AJ was um, at a talk in my parents' home. They had invited him to be there and he just happened to be in our living room <laughs> uh, giving a talk and that's how we met, yeah. One of the remarkable ironies of your life... Yes. ..is the role of your parents. Uh, my parents told me that uh, that they had found out through someone else that AJ felt that um, I was his soulmate. A former aid worker, she was born Mary Luck, but AJ has convinced her that she is Mary Magdalene. So what's happened with you and your family? I feel quite sad about it, David, yeah. Um, just that they, um, they don't accept what I want to do with my life at the moment. They don't agree with um, the way I'm living it. But they introduced you. <laughs> I know, yeah. Uh, sadly, um, my brother has said to me that he thinks I've gone mad, yeah. I have memories of being at the crucifixion. Uh, remember being there and just the intense feeling of some, my soul mate, someone I feel very connected to suffering immensely. Um, although I feel I suffered more than he did. Um, but just because of the development in love that he had at that time, but for myself, it was excruciating to watch basically the annihilation of the person that I love the most. It feels like I might die from grief and... Um, it's so real. You have convinced Mary that I she was Mary Magdalene. Mary. How has yes. he convinced me? You did not think that you were Mary Magdalene I never before even you met told AJ. Mary she was Mary Magdalene. You didn't tell her? No. No, he didn't. I did not. So how can you say I convinced Mary? Well, after she meets you, she begins to think that she's Mary Magdalene. Well, that's her. You, I you, never spoke to her You had no about thoughts it. about that beforehand, did you? No. But to be honest, I really had no idea who Mary Magdalene was. How many Mary Magdalene's have there been in your life? 
There's, there's only one Mary Magdalene in my life. Uh, but there's been others. Is it two, no, three? No, you're not asking me, you're telling me. All right, I'm asking you. OK. Did you tell other girls before Mary that they were Mary Magdalene? I, I told... Yes, definitely. One girl. Mr Miller seems to use his position as Jesus to get sexual favours from women that he is attracted to. And so he says, well, this woman is Mary Magdalene. Wait a minute, no, this woman is Mary Magdalene. It reminds me of many other uh, so-called cult leaders that I've run into over the years who use their position of spiritual authority to get what they want sexually, financially, in whatever means they wish from the people that become their followers. <laughs> Miller has an inner core of about 30 disciples who have, in his words, forsaken all to be with him and to learn at his feet. The key is to allow yourself to feel the sexual feelings but understand when they're out of harmony with love and when they're out of harmony with love not to act upon them. Does that make sense? There are hundreds more who believe he is Jesus and many thousands who are intrigued by his teachings. These are the reasons why divine love doesn't flow all the time to most people. It's because they're unwilling to have the awakening as to the perception of their true self. Of their and true there is a special 13, his chosen apostles, who Miller says have been reincarnated to spread his message. I'm called Cornelius, and that was my name in the first century, my identity, my soul identity. At Mergen, I met Cornelius and Jody, who left her husband to follow Miller. Both believe they lived at the time of Christ. So you knew Jesus? Um, as such, I saw him and listened to what he was saying. I did come across him once, and I asked him about one of my servants that was sick and he healed the servant. I was just quite amazed by what he did until the time came where we were asked to go and execute him. And then, then my, when my, my troops had to go and nail him to the stake, it was like a pole. It was me that had to do that. And as I just went to get the spike and smash it into his hands, he just kept looking at me. And it just so much love that had come from him. So I couldn't do it. I just had through the, the ballot down, through the stake, the spike down, and just walked off, which pretty much was my death sentence in those times. You don't do that. So do you think he's Jesus? I feel at times that um, yes, he's Jesus, and yes, um, Mary's Mary Magdalene. And what I feel is the beautiful friendship we had together and the loss of that. Let yourself feel the disillusionment you feel, the disillusionment about the search. Miller's followers, like Alex, have been convinced that there is an eternal battle between good and evil spirits controlling their behaviour. How does it manifest in you? How does it manifest in me? Well, in the past, it's, it's caused me to do very unloving things. Um, spirits, basically, because I'm so open, spirits hook into me, uh, basically step into my body and cause me to do things like, you know, drink all night, take drugs, you know, um, um, have sex with random women, um, just a whole lot of unloving things. And that's that's... Because of my soul condition, um, it's, it's allowed a lot of dark spirits to, to do that. Can you feel how once you start recognising the addictions you have in play, particularly the ones with spirits, how instantly the spirits up the ante? Tell me about AJ. Who is he? think about him now I just cry I'm starting to have a, a soul like an emotional realization of who he is it's just it's overwhelming because I know that only God can save me but at the moment I feel that you know, he's saved me through his teachings and his truth and love that I haven't experienced through anyone else and I've been looking for a long time if I gather 
10 of your people mm -hmm. and start talking to them. Within a minute, they're talking about the struggle. And, and, so you and just about everyone I talk to is on the verge of tears. But you notice that I don't view I mean, it as a struggle. Poor Alex. Sorry? A poor guy. He's, he's just consumed he, by, by this, this struggle. He is. And, I've and, and I've talked to Alex many times about him allowing spirits to com co almost completely control his life. I think you are at the early stages of becoming a cult leader. Well, <laughs> I don't I see how I can be a cult leader when I ask everybody to actually engage their own desires. You're on the way, AJ. You are beginning to... Look, you're beginning to, to, to gather all the means of control to yourself. You, uh, you are the only source of knowledge within the group. Oh, you are separa you are that is not true at all. You are separating people away from their families. No, so. I'm not. How many people have I talked to? One of the questions I asked them was, what does your family think? Time after time, people now, are saying... Now, David, so read your Bible. What, what was said about me in the first century? Are you engaged? Okay, what you does say, it say Jesus did in the first century? Yeah, that's right. Say it. <laughs> yeah, well, Jesus said that your greatest enemy would be your family. Well, why do you think that I said that in the first century? But that's not you, and you are not Jesus. No, that's your opinion. AJ Miller has not only convinced many ordinary Australians he really is the son of God, but he is also targeting children. In the dramatic conclusion to our special investigation, you'll also learn of Miller's doomsday prophecy for all of us. <laughs> like, say someone was on Earth and they were in the 22nd sphere mm -hmm. and they wanted to go to the spirit world, yep. like with their soul, can they do that? This is one of Miller's DVDs. Not only is he targeting vulnerable adults, he is also drawing children into his warped world. I was wondering if um, my dad, my mum and dad are soulmates? Well, I might be able to tell you it, but I'm not going to. There was another question that you might not be able to tell me, but if you really desired to die, but you didn't, you knew that it's not good to commit suicide, yeah. would your um, law of attraction bring that to you? Yes. Does God have a mum and dad? Does God have a mum and dad? Now that is the hardest possible question I can answer. <laughs> and I've lived now for 2,000 years and I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> You're having fun with this, aren't you? <laughs> you know, Miller is, is still a fairly new uh, leader. I mean, he really hasn't fully developed his group. It's, it's still in its early stages. But the idea that the group is, is, is coming together in a community and that Miller is developing a compound, in my opinion, is ominous. Again and again, historically, the most uh, extreme expressions of cults have been in compounds, and some of the most terrible cult tragedies have been asso associated with that type of isolation. This is the 600 acres that I was telling you about. It's currently owned by four different people, and what they're doing is uh, they're just waiting for the organisation to be set up as a non-profit organisation, and then they want to donate the land to the organisation. With money from his believers, Miller is acquiring properties here and around the world. Sort of goes in that direction about a kilometre and about that direction about a kilometre from here and then it goes up the hill. He calls them sanctuaries in readiness for the great cataclysm he's prophesying will soon engulf the planet. And from the chaos, yeah. so, he will emerge the saviour. Let's look at some of the things I know that you've said were going to happen, you know, like that there were... A continent was going to rise next door to Hawaii. Yeah. Cause a 100 metre tsunami that would sweep over Australia. I'll, I'll go further than that if you wish. And, uh, there was um, going to be an earthquake, a devastating earthquake, and so on. You so, made you made those predictions. And and every all of these things are going to uh, they are going to happen. The Earth itself is going to change a lot in the next few years. And what you now know as countries will, some of them will disappear completely, other ones will change completely. On one level, AJ Miller is just a buffoon. But on another level, 
He has found the ingredients that make men like him dangerous. The divine love is the only substance that flows through the Holy Spirit. And if he goes on, he will continue to separate parents from their children, wives from their husbands, and take money from his followers. I think there are two AJs. <laughs> One AJ is a friendly, open, sort of Aussie sort Aussie, of character. Aussie bloke, yeah. yeah. There's another AJ who has the heart of a tyrant. <laughs> and that's, that's, what, that, that's where you are heading. I disagree, David. And totally I see it. David. I am worried about what you're doing. Um, I don't think it will end well. Uh, for, for whom, David? For you and, and the people around you. Right. And I'd like to uh, meet you in 10 years' time and see... Can I make a prediction for you, David? OK. You're going to want me to meet me much sooner than 10 years' time. And what does that mean? Well, it just means that uh, it, many it, of your current thoughts will change over the coming three or four years, in my opinion. Are you saying that I will become convinced? I'm yeah. saying that you will, you will start thinking, wow, maybe there is something in this. So I'm perfectly happy to speak with you should you be here on Earth in four years' time or whether you should be in the spirit world in four years' hey, time. AJ, don't hold your breath, mate. Really? Well, really? Can I, can I say something to you? <coughs> Many people in the first century have said exactly the same mm. thing to me as what you are saying yeah. to me right now. And... and Many times they've come back at a later point in time and wanted to have far more deeper discussions about the matter. OK. Look, thank you. No worries, it's their pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. The Reverend David Milliken with our special investigation. The producer was Tim Wise. If you have information about AJ Miller or wish to comment on his cult, you can join the conversation on Twitter or visit our Facebook page.